It's AJ. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the second part of my complete Marvel Stroke MCU 4K and Blu-ray collection. So yeah, if you've seen the first part, you know that I looked at my complete collection of Marvel related films in the lead up to, but not including the MCU itself. So now we're getting into the MCU. Um, before I get into that, let's not talk about that. Um, first thing I want to look at, or just show you, is something that I neglected to show in the last video, because um, I had it elsewhere. I thought I did have it, but I weren't sure. And that is the animated Planet Hulk film. Yes, Planet Hulk. Um, but we'll come back to that. Even though it's not part of the MCU, I'll talk about that a bit later and you'll see why. Um, so, before I begin, um, please consider subscribing. The button's just below. Press it. If you like the video, leave me a comment. Um, also, you can leave me a thumbs up if you like the video, or if you don't, give me one then. Um, and hit the notification bell for any future, not for any future, for future up comment, uh, content. There will be future content, of course there will. And this is what I'm going to be doing. Um, anyway, so let's begin. So the MCU Marvel Cinematic Universe started in 2008 with Iron Man. Um, Robert Downey Jr. was cast. Um, the studio wasn't happy with the casting of Robert Downey Jr. Um, because of his history. Um, you know, uh, yeah. But the film was directed by John Favreau, who's essentially the architect of the MCU. He, he, he built the foundations. Without this film, we wouldn't have had nothing else that came. If this film didn't work, the whole thing would have sunk to the ground. Um, so, yeah. There's the first Iron Man, that's the standard Amaray um, disc collection. Oh, I do have a DVD loose in there. That's what I do with my DV old DVDs. Um, I don't keep them in their boxes anymore. I put them into the DVD ca Blu-ray cases, I know where they are. Um, and the sleeves I've got in a folder. I ain't got the space to hold DVDs. So yeah, so that's Iron Man. Um, yeah, great film. Um, obviously, everyone got excited at the very end. Um, when Sam Jackson appeared. Um, next up is Iron Man, the Mondo Steelbook 4K version. Uh, recently released through Zavi, um, as a Zavi exclusive. But I believe you can get them from Germany and places like that um, at a reasonable price. So yeah, Iron Man, um, it's got its own slip cover, as you can see, and it sort of fits with the writing. Yeah, and the same with the back, image on the back, part of Iron Man's face, and yeah, the J card does remove, I won't get it out. Um, so, as a comic collector, and a comic fan, um, what we're getting now, I could have only dreamed about, you know, 20, 30 years ago, when, you know, like I said, I've collected comics for that long. Um, and to see the films that we're getting now, it's just astounding, you know. It, it, it's, it was a, it was a daydream back then. It was it was something we used to talk about uh, comic collectors, and we didn't ever think it would happen. It was too expensive and all this sort of thing. But now with the advancement in technology, you know, what we had before was all pretty much most of the stuff you saw before. Um, but yeah, so it, it's a wonderful time. Um, anyway, next up after that is the Incredible Hulk, um, the black sheep of the MCU. Um, in that it's still, it, it's a Universal film, distributed by Universal, that's why you won't see it on Disney Plus or anything like that. Um, it's nice to see the film getting a bit of recognition now, in that obviously um, General Thaddeus Ross is still present in the MCU and in the new Shang-Chi uh, Shang film, um, you've got the Abomination, yeah, and you see him in the trailer. So yeah, it's, it's a great film, um, I can see why people a bit, you know, uh, Hulk's a difficult character to do. Um, as I spoke about in my last video, I won't go into it again why, um, see that video. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's the Incredible Hulk, Edward Norton, Liv Tyler, Tim Roth and William Hurt. If you know the MCU, you know that film anyway. Um, next up is Incredible Hulk 4K Steelbook, um, which is the same as the Steelbook for the Hulk, um, as in the same design with a, you know, a... a, a die cut box um, so you can see some of the art through it it kind of matches in design and all that it's like a double set um, that's the 4k version it's nice Iron Man 2 standard blu-ray I don't have this on 4k um, yeah whiplash the villain um, the introduction of Black Widow 
I ain't seen that for a while actually. Then came Thor, directed by Kenneth Branagh. Now Thor, I, I did enjoy. It feels like a smaller scale Marvel film and it's all set in this little desert town and all this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, great cast. An introduction of Loki, still about today. Um, yeah, enjoyable film, enjoyable film. Then I have the 4K Thor Mondo steelbook. Um, you can see a reflection of the whole room in that, can't you? Um, yeah, you can see me in that. You can see the window there. You can see a whole array of Blu-ray wall over there. Anyway, so uh, that's the 4K um, Mondo Steelbook. Again, savvy. Um, but, yeah, I enjoy that. I enjoy that. My favourite MCU character up next, Captain America the First Avenger. Um, yeah, Chris Evans. Hayley Atwell, um, Hugo Weaving as the Red Skull, the introduction of Bucky Barnes, um, wonderful film. Um, directed by Joe Johnson, who directed The Rocketeer. Um, if you want to check out, I've done a video on opening of the steelbook of The Rocketeer and a little chat about the film. Go see it. Uh, anyway, next up is the Mondo steelbook. Damn you, Reflections. There's Captain America shield up there on the wall. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Mondo Steelbook of Captain America the First Avenger. I love this steelbook. Probably my favourite of the MCU steelbooks. Next up, another steelbook for Captain America. It's just a standard Blu-ray. I got this for four quid um, about two months ago in CEX. I think they had it priced up as the um, standard Amoray case. But for four quid, I was going to pick it up. Of course I was. Next up, we have Avengers Assemble, or just the Avengers, however you want to call it. Um, coming together of all them films, um, who could have thought it? You know, uh, Joss Whedon directed, um, yeah, a wonderful film. You see the death of Phil Coulson, which we'll talk about with later. Um, yeah, so, good film. And next up, we have the Mondo Steelbook for <coughs> the Avengers. Um, now, this wasn't available for Zavi in this country, and I think it's to do with the title of the film. Because in this country, the title of the film was changed to Avengers Assemble. But this still book is just, obviously, was created as The Avengers. So I don't think it got a release over here for that very reason. They couldn't go and redo the whole still book art, could they? So, yeah, so that one. But you can get that in Amazon Germany for a relatively cheap price. Then we have Iron Man 3, the first solo billion dollar earning MCU film. Um, bit, bit controversial in the character of Trevor Slattery or the Mandarin. That reveal people didn't like, but Ben Kingley is such a great actor. So, you know what I mean? When he turned into uh, Trevor Slattery, it's just superb. Um, and then I have a still book for the film. Got that cheap, and I have another still book for the film with the arc reactor on it, um, which I got relatively cheap. So, three versions of that. I don't know. <laughs> Next up, probably the least favourite of the MCU films for the Dark World. It's just quite ho hum. I actually saw them filming this down in Greenwich. And I've got to walk around the set after was, after they'd done filming where some of the columns in, in Greenwich were, you know, in, in the maritime place were all covered in um, blue blue sheath, sheets to, to take out in post-production. And also there was upturned cars and, and rock piles which were, you know, fabricated. Um, probably didn't weigh anything. Um, yeah. Then we have one of my favourite MCU films, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Now, when they announced this, I got super excited because the fact that we were getting the Winter Soldier, um, Ed Brubaker, comic book character, um, comic book writer character, what am I saying? Ed Brubaker, comic book writer, was writing a fantastic run on Captain America that I was reading at the time, and he introduced the character of the Winter Soldier. Now, Bucky Barnes was one of them characters that... that should never have been able to be brought back to life. Um, 
much like um, Uncle Ben and all this sort of thing. But Ed Brubaker just knocked it out of the ballpark like, with the creation of The Winter Soldier. And as soon as they announced this film, um, I was super excited. Um, next up is the Best Buy 4K steelbook version of The Winter Soldier. This is actually his comic book Super Soldier Suit. Um, that's what they call it, Captain America Super Soldier. Um, it was actually at a point where he, he stopped being Captain America um, and he came back as a super soldier. But that's what that suit is from, that, that comic run. I know it's sort of like is is um, is when he goes on dark missions. That's his suit for that. Next up, we have James Gunn's foray into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, The Guardians of the Galaxy. What a fantastic film. You know, to be able to take a comic book, which is B-list or C-list even, and turn it into a film you know, like this, um, that earns the money it did. Uh, wonderful stuff, wonderful. Um, I then have a still book for it. Beautiful still book, 4K. Um, I do like that still book. And another still book, which is the Mondo 4K still book for Xavi again. Yeah, I know I've got multiple times. It's the same film, but I love them. MCU's greatest thing ever. Um, then we have, don't get the, it doesn't get the love it deserves this film. Age of Ultron is a really good Avengers film, um, but it's, it's forgotten about. It's, it's because obviously the first one was the coming together of everyone. Um, this one, Marvel made a mistake when they made, they advertised these films because um, before this was even out, they'd announced Infinity War and when you say Infinity War, you know, and you've got the Infinity Gauntlet and all this sort of stuff, it kind of overshadows Age of Ultron, and, and that's what happened. Shame, but there you go. I do need to get that in 4K. Um, then I have Ant-Man, Paul Rudd. Again, you know, these are characters that shouldn't really work. Um, C-list characters, B-list characters, and Marvel took them and run with them, and, and they're just so good. I mean, it's great. Great comedic film, um, yes, just brilliant. Michael Pena in it, wonderful. Evangeline Lilly from Lost as, as um, Hope Van Dyne. Yeah, and then I have another three D. I like these these still books that, that you know. Yeah, they're, they're very subtle, very you know they're different. They're, they're nice. I like that with Ant Man right there in the middle. Um, yeah, good. And then I also have a 4K version of Ant-Man. Well, why not? Next up, again with this one, as soon as they announced they were doing Civil War, oh, I was there for the original comic run of this, um, that, that, that this is based upon, and it's a fantastic story. It really is. It goes... It, it, it's, it's, it's more... It's bigger in the comics, you know, this is just a small bunch of heroes. In the comics it is mass, it, you know, it is huge and, and it's a wonderful, wonderful story by Mark Miller that was done at the time. Um, very much worth reading. Um, then I've got the 4K still book for Captain America Civil War. Now Captain America Captain America has got the, the finest trilogy, it's the best trilogy out of any of the characters within the MCU to date, um, hands down. Um, then we have Doctor Strange. This is the Blu-ray 3D version. Now I do have some of these 3D boxes. They're better than the standard Blu-ray boxes. I haven't got 3D, um, but I can watch it through my son's VR, PlayStation VR thing. I have tried, but it's not really for me. But there you go. Um, but yeah, wonderful film, Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, I've just reviewed his latest film, The Courier. Go check it out. <laughs> plug, plug. Um, anyway, next up I have a still book for Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange, um, which is uh, The Eye of Agamotto. Now, I know that Tilda Swinton is not, uh, you know, her casting in it, you know, they're all going about whitewashing and all this, but I thought Tilda Swinton was fantastic. Um, even in a little turn in, in Endgame, um, when they went back in the past, you know, she just stole stole those scenes. She was fantastic in this, as as the ancient one. And Mads Mikkelsen was wasted. 
which is unfortunate. He's a wonderful actor as well. So then I have a 4K steelbook for the same film. And a 4K Mondo steelbook for, for the film. Done in a comic style, comic book style art. Um, and obviously that, like with the others, it does sort of come up and match the... Yeah, you've probably seen these anyway. If you like Marvel, yeah, you know, Blu-rays and that, you've seen them. Uh, then we have Garden of the Galaxy Volume 2. That's the 3D version with Slip. Again, my mate Sean Chandler doesn't like this film. He says that it's um, it, it's mean. Yeah, very mean-spirited film. But I don't believe it's a mean-spirited film. I think it's a fantastic film. Um, when I first saw it at the cinema, I was a bit... Because it doesn't, the story doesn't run like a, a, a proper story within a film. It's not like your first, second, third act. It's more like five acts of a film, and um, yeah. But it is, it grew on me, and I think it's fantastic. Um, I then got this recently, just the other day. You've seen me do an opening, which is the still book. Um, I got this for twelve quid, um, so I was happy with that. Um, I just need the 4K of this. I've actually ordered the 4K disc. Someone was selling the, for 6 99 the 4K and the Blu-ray disc um, without any packaging, without any box. So I bought them and they're gonna go and sit in this box here. I'm happy about that when they come. Next up, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yep, obviously Spider-Man first appeared in Civil War. Tom Holland, um, Batman, Michael Keaton, um, fantastic film. And also nice to see, um, uh, what's his face? <laughs> I said his name, directed Iron Man. Jesus. You know, Happy Hogan. I already said his name earlier, and now it's gone out of my head. Oh, John Favreau. Jesus Christ, John Favreau. Fantastic, he's in it. Nice to see Happy Hogan giving a bit of love in some films. <laughs> I don't know where my mind goes at times. Then I have the 4K lenticular still book for Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, not a fantastic lenticular, not much depth to it or anything. Nothing to really shout home about. Yeah, yeah. Just put that down there. That's a good film though, fantastic film. Um, then we have Thor Ragnarok. Now, the reason I said I was gonna come back and talk about this, Small Soldiers, I picked up the wrong damn film. <laughs> Cut that bit out. The reason I was going to come back and talk about this, <laughs> Planet Hulk, I'll leave that bit in. <laughs> oh, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Anyway, so <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. Um, again, people got excited when this film was announced because it, it done the Ragnarok storyline, plus it done Planet Hulk. Now, in the comics, I'll go into the comics, talk a little bit about the comics for this one. It's interesting. Uh, now, in the comics, um, they've done a storyline called the Illuminati, which brought together all the, the heads, the hero heads. So you had, like, Professor Xavier, you had Doctor Strange, you had um, a Namor, you had Reed Richards, uh, and, and all these other big characters, like, you know, sort of who lead the way, so to speak. Um, and, and, and they sent Hulk up into space on a mission um, to stop this Hydra satellite um, from crashing down on Earth that Hydra had been using. Um, Hulk gets up there, you know, long story short, he stops it. Um, but it turns out it's actually S.H.I.E.L.D. satellite. Um, and they, you know, so S.H.I.E.L.D.'s been doing this sort of like, you know, grey experiment, so to speak, you know, sitting in a grey area. Um, and then when Hulk's done, he gets back in his spaceship but they blast him off away from Earth and they say to him, look, Bruce, you're too dangerous to have on Earth. You're too uncontrollable, all this sort of stuff. Um, so we found this nice desolate planet for you where you can live out your life peacefully. There'll be nothing to anger you, to, you know, so the rage won't exist, you know, and you can live peacefully. It's, it's, it's a habitable planet, but there's no life on it outside of like flora and fauna. Um, so there's no one to wind you up and you know um anyway the, the, the ship gets knocked off course and they end up on Sakaar Hulk ends up on Sakaar um and then it leads into a storyline called Planet Hulk which was adapted into this animated film now Planet Hulk um obviously the Hulk is used in gladiatorial games um 
much like this film. This is where the Hulk stuff in this film came from. It came from the Planet Hulk storyline. Again, a story worth reading, um, a comic book worth reading. It is available in a graphic novel, graphic novel form. Um, and it culminated in the destruction of Sakaar um, because the ship had a... Uh, the ship itself, if I recall, it's been some time, but the ship itself had a, um, a, a bomb built into it and for some reason the bomb ended up going off um, and only a few people escaped the car and people that Hulk knew or got to know when he was there and, and he got back to Earth and then came a storyline called World War Hulk where the Hulk wanted revenge on the heroes that had put him into, um, who sent him up. Yeah, um, so he sort of brought gladi gladiatorial games back to Earth and pitted the heroes against one another with the electric shock things that you see Thor wearing in this. So yeah, so Ragnarok and Planet Hulk were sort of mixed into one storyline. Obviously it's directed by the great Taika Waititi, um, fantastic director. Um, yeah, um, brilliant film. Brilliant version of Thor as well. They changed the character of Thor, made him a bit more hipster, a bit more, you know, um, and it worked for the character. Um, wasn't as boring as what he was in the other films. So then I do have a 4K version of Thor Ragnarok. Then we have the next outing is from the late Chadwick Boseman. Um, unfortunately, what happened to him? He played Black Panther. Um, this film, highly rated. People loved it. People went to see it. Um, yeah, uh, it's got some moody CGI at the end when the two heroes are fighting um, in the underparts of Wakanda. But other than that, it's, it's an alright film. Martin Freeman, the other half of Sherlock, stars um, in a role. Um, yeah, good character, good film. Then we came to, oh, my still book of Black Panther. This is the uh, Mondo. Exclusive still book for a film, still sealed and opened it yet. May do an opening for that one, have a look at it, share it with you. Um, yeah. Now I'll go a bit out of order here because this is my watching order. So I have Ant Man and Wasp. Um, yeah, The Return of Paul Rudd. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer stars. Um, Walton Goggins. Oh, there he is. Plays the villain, great actor, Walton Goggins. Nice to see him in stuff. Um, yeah, and I do have a 4K still book for that film as well. Um, now, the reason I watched this before um, Infinity War is because if you watch this before in Infinity War, pretend you didn't know what happens in Infinity War, and then you see the end of this where they turn to dust, you're left wondering, oh my God, what's happened? What, what, what's that mean? What's, what's happened to them? And then you go into Infinity War, and then as Infinity War, War ends, you come to realise, bloody hell, yeah, that's, yeah, see what I mean? Um, so it does work being watched before Infinity War. So yeah, so next up is Infinity War. Um, fantastic film, um, so clever in its writing, and it's, well, I mean, there's not much story to it, it's pretty much just action from beginning to end, non-stop. Um, but to have all these characters in it. It's got fantastic scenes um, between Thor and and, and Star-Lord and, and things like that. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a really good film. Um, Hulk sort of taken out of the equation early. So he's stuck in Bruce Banner form. Um, yeah. And then I do have a steelbook version of it um, with the 4K inside. But yeah, superb film. So yeah, happy days. So then came Captain Marvel. Now, this film went on to earn a lot of money, had a lot of criticism. People were, at the time were saying, oh, the numbers have been fudged, have been lied about, and all this sort of stuff. It's all crap. I don't know about that stuff. I don't think I'd go and do that. Let's just be stupid. Um, it's on the lesser side of Marvel films. I mean, it looks great, but... It lacks something. It lacks that sort of wow factor that the other Marvel films do. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it is lacking in, in something. Obviously, it's nice to see um, 
the return of uh, Nick Fury after all his time, because um, he'd been gone for a while. But then I do have a 4K version of that as well, which is in this box, which if you press a button, where is it? There's a button here somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is. They see it all lights up. Oh, I'll turn it off. Oh, come on, love. There you go, it lights up. So when I bought this, the it did have the 4K version in it where the steel book was uh, between the two hanger doors, which I, I dislike, honestly. So I did buy the lenticular steel book, fabulous looking steel book, nice lenticular on it, um, and and sold the other one, <coughs> and just slipped that one in. There. Happy days. Then I have. Avengers Endgame. That's my favourite Avengers film. I would take this over at Infinity War, um, just because Infinity War, la Infinity War lacks the story, um, and I like story. Um, this one has a lot of emotion to it, a lot of heart, um, the farewells to the characters, you know, it's got a lot of humour. It's a fantastic, fantastic film. You know, the musical score at the end, Paul Tools, where everyone comes through, gives you chills each time you watch it. Um, it's a brilliant film. It is, in my mind, a lot better than Infinity War. Not, I'm not knocking Infinity War. I love the MCU. I'm just saying this is better, in my opinion. So that's Endgame. But then I do have a 4K version. Yeah, you'd get all badges and stuff in art cards in this bit, but I'm not going to open them up. I press that, and again, it lights up. Like so. These batteries are going to die out one day. <laughs> you know they will. <laughs> and it'll be like, it doesn't light up. And there's no way, real way to access the batteries without ruining the box. Stupid. Anyway, again with that, I changed the the um, thingy. That was the steel book that came on the interior. Like that. Um, I wonder if that was on the other one. <laughs> Let me go back. Yeah, yeah. So that was the steel book that came in the Captain Marvel one. And I swapped it out for the for that nice lenticular. And the same goes for this. So that was the steel book. Um, and I swapped it out for that steel book. 4K. Lovely lenticular. Superb. Um, yeah. So essentially, I sold the other steel book for the price that this steel book would have cost me. So the, the exchange didn't really cost anything as such. Okay, then we move into, now this is like viewing order, okay, um, not, not release order. So then next up, we have the Blu-ray of Loki. Yes, Loki season one TV series, um, because this follows straight on from um, Endgame. Um, yeah, because obviously there's a scene in that where Loki gets the Tesseract and disappears. And this opens with Loki getting the Tesseract and disappearing and, and reappearing. So that comes th then. Then comes WandaVision. Now these are, in. if you're watching these in, in order, they do come before Spider-Man Far From Home. Which we'll get to. Um, because obviously witches and all that sort of stuff. So it's WandaVision season one. And... Falcon and the Winter Soldier, season one. Um, yeah. Now the reason they come before Spider-Man Far From Home, um, I think this is set around the same sort of time frame, but certainly WandaVision is set before, because in this film you have talk of witches and stuff like that, and no one would have known witches existed until the events that occurred in WandaVision. So, um, makes sense. So yeah, so that's... Um, 4K version of Far From Home, Spider-Man, Spider-Monkey, <laughs> Spider-Monkey, um, and I do have another 4K version, which is this, um, and you, it lights up, like so, fantastic box, um, again with this one, that's a steel book that was in it, you get all badges and art cards and that, little box opens up, but I think I did swap out the Still booking this. What didn't I? No, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. It was that one. That is the right still book that came with that. I know what I'd done. I did have the 4K lenticular 
steel book for that and I sold it um, because I got this this I got hold of this one but um, I sold it without the lenticular part I kept hold of the lenticular <laughs> um, yeah um, I kept hold of that just to I keep it in the box um, so yeah so 4k far from home so yeah <coughs> So that's the MCU. Now, I'm going to start looking at the TV stuff that I've got now. Um, which, I'll tell you what. Let's take a quick break right here, right now. And I'll be back with the TV stuff in about five seconds. Or ten seconds. I don't know. See, I said it'd be no more than about ten seconds, didn't I? They believe me. And in that time, in that 10 seconds, I managed to have a quick change up of some of the uh, collectibles behind me. There you go. So anyway, <laughs> let's get started. So, MCU TV. Now this is a bit of a, um, uh, it's a bit of a difficult one because are these MCU related or aren't they MCU related? Yeah, they're sort of linked, but they're not. <laughs> well, now we have multiverses and and uh, variants. Thank you, Loki, and all that. We can say that you know it's set in a different timeline. But you know, first up for Marvel TV, we had Agents of Shield. Now, at the time, they were saying yes, this is you know this is set within the MCU. Um, but it was one-sided. It, it was one-sided. It was. From the TV's point of view, yes, we're set in the MCU. From the film's point of view, no. Are not set in the MCU. The TV series would acknowledge the films, but the films would never acknowledge the TV series. So, as far as the, t the films are concerned, Agent Coulson died in Avengers. He didn't come back in this. Um, it, it sort of rendered his death meaningless, in that his death was what, what brought the Avengers together. Um, so, yeah, so from the TV perspective, yes, we're set in the MCU. From the film's perspective, no, you're not set in the MCU. So, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's very thingy. Anyway, so we had Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. Um, it wasn't very good. Um, it was quite mediocre. Um, you know, no one thought that it would run for as long as it did. But the first couple of years were rough, which generally happens with TV shows. But uh, the, the programme got better when it stepped away from the confines of the MCU and trying to keep up with what they were doing. That very much restricted the storytelling within the show and what it could and couldn't do. Um, so then I have Agent Shield Season 2. Um, Agent Shield Season 3. Agent Shield Season 4, which introduced Ghost Rider. Um, the Robbie Ray's version of the character, not Johnny Blaze, not Danny Ketch. He didn't have a motorcycle, he had a flaming car. Um, it was a, a very new iteration of the Ghost Rider. Um, but it was nice to see him in film, and, and he was, you know, he looked pretty damn good. Um, yeah. And then, in season five, it went into space. Um, now, season five saw... Uh, it had a natural conclusion point to this program at this point. It, it left with Agent um, Phil Coulson being left on the beach to die because his time was running out um, because of stuff that happened in the first season, how he came back and all this sort of stuff. Um, so it had a very logical conclusion point and it felt like a finale and the other characters went off um, to fight another day, so to speak, and he was left on the beach with May. No, it ain't May. Agent May. <laughs> Looking at things in reverse, I need my glasses checked. Anyway, yeah, it had a natural conclusion point. But, um, lo and behold, it continued for another two seasons. Because um, they didn't know whether they were being picked up or not. Now, um, in infinite wisdom, they stopped releasing the Blu-rays at season five. We never get got six and seven. Um, damn annoyed about. But, this guy has got season six and seven as a bootleg um yeah i had to sort of source them in this manner um i don't care you know if i can't have them then i'll source them this way you know the picture quality is great sounds great um it annoys me that you know if they released them i'd buy them on original because it doesn't annoy me that i bought bootlegs but it annoys me more 
that I end with season five and I'll never have season six to sit next to her. Season six and seven. But now I do. So, yes. Um, they have enough of my money that I can um, honestly feel happy getting a bootleg. So anyway, next up we had um, Agent Carter. Season one, run for 10 episodes. And season two, run for, no, no, it's another season one. Sorry, I got two season ones. Just because it was cheap from Australia and it was a different cover. <coughs> Hayley Atwell was great as that character. She really embodied that character. Um, it's fantastic to see her back in her own series. And it's a shame it only lasted the two seasons. Um, they should bring her back for a film at least on Disney Plus or something like that. Um, if you agree with me, let me know. Um, then I do have two still books. Complete first season of Agent Carter. You can see I like this character. And season two, complete uh, still book version of Agent Carter. <laughs> yes. And I've just dropped her. Um, don't you hate it when that happens? Anyway, next up, an animated series, pretty new, Modoc. It's an animated series um, done like um, oh, Robot Chicken, um, adult orientated humour. Very funny if you know the character, but it's a Z-list character, so I don't suppose many people do. But it was a great, great, um, it's on Disney+, Plus. it was a Hulu series, you can watch it, it's worth watching. Give it the first couple of episodes, get into it. Um, uh, Patton Oswalt voices um, Modoc. Um, next up we have Netflix's foray into the Marvel Universe, which again, loosely acknowledge the films, but the films are never really going to acknowledge these. Are they MCU? Aren't they MCU? No, they're not. They're not. Come on. You know. But anyway, you had Charlie Cox, perfectly cast as Daredevil. He was brilliant. There's rumours we might be seeing him back. Let's hope so. Um, it was a, gr a great season one. And then we had season two, which brought in Frank Castle and the Punisher. Not my favourite iteration of Frank Castle and the Punisher. Watch my earlier video. Um, but um, either that or check out this video, another plug, um, where I talk about the history of the Punisher, my favourite comic character, in film. Yes, worth checking out. And I explain there why um, um, this isn't my favourite iteration of the Punisher. Um, then we have another great series, Jessica Jones, created by... Created by Brian Michael Bendis. Yes, the comic creator. Um, he wrote the comics for these early on. I have got all the Jessica Jones stories. Obviously, they were out before the TV series was ever announced. Um, so I was familiar with the character. Ex-superhero, giving it up to become a, a private eye, so to speak. Um, yes, that's the only season we got on Blu-ray. Then season one of Luke Cage, Hero for Hire. He was great as Luke Cage. Um, yeah. The problem with Netflix, Netflix shows is they felt like they had a split down the middle. Like Daredevil Season 2, The Punisher was in the first half and the second half dealt with Elektra. And each series was, was created, they sort of felt like this, very much like a split down the middle. Um, I think they were a couple of episodes too long. They did get a bit draggy and boring, to be honest. Um, David Tennant was great in that. So yeah, so that was Luke Cage. Um, next up we have Iron Fist, season one, and that's where it stopped, um, we didn't get nothing after that, released, they stopped along with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they stopped releasing Netflix stuff, um, so no doubt I will catch up with bootleg versions at some point, grey versions, but I do have Punisher season one. Bootleg Blu-ray and Punisher season two on Bootleg Blu-ray. Um, frustrating series. Love the Punisher. Like I said, um, it never felt like he'd become the Punisher. It always felt like it was his journey to becoming. Um, it felt like he was the Punisher in Daredevil season two, and then when they done the series, it felt like they'd taken a step back and had to reintroduce him as the Punisher. Um, 
and his journey of becoming the Punisher and not fully, um, you know, embracing that. Um, so it was a bit frustrating in that sense. Um, and then I do have some, I'm going to finish up with some bootleg DVDs that I have. Um, Defender Season 1, it's still sealed. But I would upgrade that to a bootleg Blu-ray. And I have, which I already upgraded, Punisher Season 1 and 2 on bootleg DVD with slip covers. Um, I, this was before the Blu-rays, you know, I, I, found, I, I found the Blu-rays. Um, so, yeah, if it was the only way I could have them, it was the only way I could have them. Um, and Season 3 of Daredevil. And that there's my last. So that covers... All my MCU, all my Marvel collection of those two part videos can cover all my Marvel Blu-rays and DVDs. Not for long though. I expect there'll be more soon. <laughs> there will be more soon. Black Widow next. Anyway, um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please give me your thoughts down below. Leave me a comment down there. No. <laughs> yeah, leave me a comment down there. But leave me a comment. That's the comment thing there. Look. Again. What's going on in my head? Um, leave me, no, click for notifications for my next upcoming videos. Then leave me a subscription. That's what I was pointing out, a subscription bit there. Come on. Those of you who ain't subscribed, please subscribe. Come on now. Yeah, I'm not gonna sell you no merchandise. No, I, I want a little bit of your time. Just hit that subscribe button. Reach down, press it now. I'm not going anywhere until you press that button. Anyway, give me a thumbs up. Now, be sure to come back. Because next I'm going to be looking at my DC um, comic book related movies and TV. Um, there's a wealth of them. There is a lot. Um, so that'll probably be done over two parts. And then after that I'll be doing another part looking at other comic book related movies that fall outside of the banner of Marvel and DC. Um, all your sort of um, independent style type of comic book characters. Um, that I have on Blu-ray, um, on, yeah, so, yeah, this is AJ, thanks for watching, um, it's been good having your company, <laughs> and I'll see you next time round, take care.